Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from thomasfitzgeraldphotography.com and today I want to give you a quick overview of using the import process in Capture One Pro. So a few people have written to me and I've seen in commentary now and again that some people have uh, some issues with figuring out how to use the import dialog in Capture One and they find it a little bit confusing. Um, I've been using Capture One for a while now so I'm kind of used to it but I can understand how it can actually cause confusion for some people especially if you're coming from Lightroom which might seem a bit simpler to use but it's actually very similar. Uh, a lot of this is down to whether you're using Capture One in a library setup or in a, a session setup so basically Capture One has two modes you can use it in what's called session mode which is basically it's a folder based structure where uh, it's most suitable for doing single projects or one-off shoots and a lot of people like to use this when they're working in um, with the tethered uh, setup or the other option is a more traditional library based system um, which would be something kind of similar to the way you would use it with Lightroom and it's actually very similar to the way Aperture used to work so when you're importing you have two options you can store your files wherever you choose on the disk or you can store them within your library if that is you're using a library setup. So in this example what I'm going to show you now is I have taken some shots this morning I was out in some street and cityscape photography and I have put the card in my computer and now I'm going to import them into Capture One. Now I'm using a library uh, so this is kind of probably the way most people would use Capture One so I'm going to show you the process for that setup. Okay so let's dive right in. So here I am in Capture One and uh, I have the memory card in my computer so I'm just going to hit the import button. Okay so that's not the right card and it is this one. So I'm just going to give it a second and let it uh, build up the previews for the import. So I don't have a huge amount of images here. So the first thing you'll see is on this section up here you have import from and source so this is to basically tells you where your import source is. So that can either be memory cards, which come up up the top here. And down here you have previous folders and you can also choose a folder. So this can be anywhere in your hard drive. Okay, and then import to, as you might imagine, um, this is basically where your destination is going to be. So in this case, uh, you can tell it to either be, it can either be inside the catalog. So that's within your library file or you can put it within a folder. And to, to select your folder, you just hit choose folder. So if you if you had used Aperture, you may remember the two different ways Aperture used to work. It was, you could have, you run it in a completely managed setup, in which case it would import everything into your library and it would take care of all the locations of files for you. Or you could use a reference setup, which is in which case it would just import the references. Um, and that's kind of the way Capture One works as well. So in this case, I want to do I want to put it somewhere because um, I want to use it as a reference setup. So I am going to store it on an external drive and I'm going to put it inside Photos 2017. Okay, and I'm going to set as import folder. Now, what you may have noticed there is I didn't put it within a subfolder. And the reason for that is you can actually set your subfolder based on parameters of the images. So I can, if I go in here, I can see import date and then I have this set to make, which is, if I go down here, you will find it, uh, it's basically the make of camera. So when I go, what this will do is create a subfolder, but today's date, and make, which will be, in this case, Fuji. So it will create a folder called whatever date today is, a dash Fuji, and it'll import the images into there. That actually makes it a bit easier. And the reason I do it this way is sometimes I will I might start working in Capture One and I might decide, you know, I think I'm going to use Lightroom for this or I'm going to use some other software. And by keeping them referenced like this, it just makes it a lot easier to work with multiple applications. OK, so I'm going to hit OK on that. So that will that's set my import location. OK, so for collection, this is basically add to an album. Now, this functionality in Capture One is not great. Um, you need to already have the album set up. You can't create a new one here. so tend to generally ignore that. Okay, um, back up to. So this uh, will basically duplicate your um, import files and save them to another location. So it's handy if you want to back it up. Okay, now naming, 
this is basically you can rename your images on import. Um, so this setup here is for image name. So that's basically just takes the name from the file name, but you can set different parameters here. And if I go in here, here's all the uh, tokens that you can use. Um, tokens, by the way, are kind of parameters. So they're variables. So it will take it from things like um, the EXIF data. So, uh, or if you have GPS coordinates or anything like that. So there's loads of different things you can use to create the name. So for example, I could have the name based on the lenses I used or the orientation of the file. Uh, you can actually create some complex setups here and it has a number of presets for you already. So you can have job name, counter and so on. So I'm gonna cancel that because I'm happy enough for image name. And then job name is if you want to call your project something um, and then you can use that as a token within the project for various different things. Uh, I'm not gonna use that. And then down here, metadata. So you've got pretty basic metadata, uh, which is your copyright and your description. You can't do keywords on import here, um, which to be honest is not a big deal because I find that you generally only use keywords on import for kind of global things. Um, and because most images will require different keywords, although it is nice to have, so it's, it can be an issue if, if that's something that you miss. And then description. To be honest, I'm not sure why you would enter description on a whole set of images, but anyway, uh, some people might like to use that. And if you need that, then that's the useful thing to have. Okay, then down here, adjustments are, you can uh, assign a style. So again, if you're coming from Lightroom, it's the same as applying a preset on import. Um, and you can use either styles or presets. Um, and styles and presets have different terminology in Capture One, and I'm not gonna go into that here because it's kind of a bit long-winded, but basically styles are kind of overall presets that can uh, encompass multiple parameters, whereas the term presets generally applies only to one kind of thing. So for example, curves, you can have a preset for curves, but a style might have things like curves, color correction, levels, and so on. Okay, and then auto adjust will apply some automatic adjustments, I never use that. And then include existing adjustments. Um, if there are things that can be translated into Capture One, then it will apply them. I, again, I usually leave both of these off. Um, and that's pretty much it. So once you do this, I'm gonna hit import all. And it will start importing. And this will go to, it'll create up here in the library section, you will see it creates a new uh, recent import. Uh, you see this activity panel come up and this is just a window you can move around. So uh, here you can see the status of the import. So this is copying them to my hard drive and then this is also generating previews and it does both at the same time. So I can start looking at things straight away. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. There's actually not a lot to it. As you can see, it's actually fairly straightforward. Um, and once you're in Capture One, you can do things very similar to what you could with Aperture. So you can create a project, a group, a smart album, or an album. And it's just various different ways you can uh, organize your files. I will do a separate video for that at some point because that's actually, uh, there's actually quite a lot to it. Um, and you can create fairly complex setups. Again, I keep saying this, but if anyone's coming from Aperture, this is very similar to the way Aperture used to work. So, uh, but anyway. So that's pretty much it. That's how you import images into Capture One. And it's actually fairly straightforward once you kind of just go through the options and understand everything that's going on. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you found this useful. And uh, I'll have more Capture One quick tips coming soon. Okay, um, thanks for watching. And uh, again, if you have any questions about Capture One and anything you'd like to know, just leave them in the comments below and I will endeavor to do a Q&A video at some point in the future. Okay, thanks again. Thanks for watching.